Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the Market Site Studio in Times Square, New York City, we have Umesh Sachdev, co-founder and CEO of Unifor, to discuss conversational AI and automation across the enterprise and operating responsibly with those technologies. Umesh, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Jill, thank you for having me. You got it. Tell us more about Unifor and how you're working with enterprises today. Jill, we're an AI native company with a vision of being the defining AI platform for all conversation that take place across the enterprise. We work with about 1,500 enterprise customers and end users around the world in 20 countries, and these are customers in 13 different industry types, telecom, healthcare, et cetera. So we are really at the forefront of making AI work within B2B enterprise situations. Couple of areas where we really have seen big impacts. First, we, we work with a lot of contact centers and call centers. That's an area where millions of calls are received by these businesses. People like you and I are calling to get something resolved very quickly, but most of the time we are being made to put, you know, stay on hold, et cetera. And that's because you know, it's a very complex situation. The agent who's talking to us is also trying to get something resolved on their computer, et cetera. Clear example where AI now can be a great co-pilot to that human employee. When you and I call, AI is listening in and in real time acting on the behalf of the employee so you and I can get resolved faster and we move on. Similarly, areas where in, inside the company, businesses are occurring on video meetings, Zoom calls, WebEx meetings, but it's really hard to build trust and connections with these remote setups. Everyone is now a small thumbnail, you have a presentation in the middle. Imagine being a salesperson trying to pitch mm -hmm. and trying to build relationship. You can't read the room, you don't know how your pitch is landing, are people confused about it? Yet again, AI using computer vision can be monitoring everyone's emotion and sentiment while you're pitching and be a co-pilot giving you recommendation that a you're going too fast, probably you, know, you wanna slow down and repeat that topic, the audience is not catching it. So these are great examples where hundreds of millions of dollars of efficiency gains are being seen in businesses leveraging AI in today's environment. And we're hearing so much news about how the AI wave is transforming and disrupting the customer service industry, I mean, all industries, to your point. What are some examples with how AI is changing the customer service experience? Well, think about this. It's a $350 billion industry today. Uh, 15 million workers work at it every day around the world. And this is one which is ripe for disruption. AI has the right toolkit to change the economies in this, uh, in this industry. I think of it as a pyramid of three layers. First, there's an opportunity to eliminate the need for consumers like you and I to even reach out to call centers. If the right tool is available, if the right answer is available on the website and other sources, why would I call? So there's an opportunity to take 20 to 30% traffic completely eliminated because AI can be smarter and proactive in getting us the answer even before we want the answer for it. Then there's the opportunity that, oh, we didn't find the answer. We want to reach out to customer service there's an opportunity to deflect another 30% traffic away from the human call center agent who's very busy in a queue, et cetera, to these AI-powered chatbots and voice bots. AI is now very powerful and can have a very natural conversation, natural sounding, human sounding conversation with you and I. So if we really have to and are in a hurry, don't wanna wait in a queue, we can get a bot answering our question. Finally, even in our lifetime, we're still gonna have about 50% of calls having to land to a human. Why? Because as a species, we want empathy on the other side sometimes. We are, we are stuck on, a, on a, a, a freeway with a flat tire with family and kids in the back seat. We want an empathetic voice on the other side. But also what we want is yet again, while we're talking to a real human, AI being a co-pilot to the human, while the human is giving us the comfort and saying, I've got your back, but AI is running the automation. So tremendous opportunity to act as a catalyst for disruption tremendous economic shift is very likely to occur in, in the next two to three years in this very massive industry, and which is why all commentators are saying this is the one area which is gonna get massively impacted by generative AI. Let's talk about regulation and the ethics behind AI. What's the importance of organizations operating responsibly? Jill, this is the first time uh, that I can think about in history of software where usually Silicon Valley and software developers who are excited about a new innovation are faced with some you know, uh, criticism or question marks from Wall Street or Washington and asking about regulation. This is the first time the inventors and the innovators, companies like Unifor, who are at the forefront of AI, 
are asking for regulation. And the reason is that we as creators of this technology at Unifor, we recognize that there are some risks. This is a very powerful and profound technology, tremendous positive impact on human lives, but also potential for risk. So there is an opportunity to draw a very thin line here where if we are being very thoughtful and businesses can partner with lawmakers to come up with the right amount of guardrails, which doesn't curtail innovation. We wanna move fast. We want America to be at the forefront of this innovation, but at the same time put enough guardrails that bad actors who could now easily have access to this very powerful technology, they have some friction in using it for bad purposes. What is the introduction of generative AI and chat GPT meant for Unifor specifically? Well, we saw six months ago when OpenAI put out chat GPT, it really gave an opportunity to rethink the internet search or rethink the internet and the World Wide Web completely, the way we use it, the way we access it, et cetera. We at Unifor are very focused on finding business to business applications, areas like the call center inside a business, areas like sales meetings and uh, marketing meetings inside a business. There's tremendous opportunity for AI to, to be a catalyst, to be disruptive in those setups and really add tremendous efficiencies back to those businesses. Because we've been in this industry for 15 years, gathering data with all our customers in 13 different industries, we recognize the positive impact this could have. So with generative AI, everyone's curious, everyone wants a strategy, but they also want it to deliver value within their business to business setup, which is where Unifor is really at the forefront. Enterprises leverage SaaS business models, right? It's cost effective, it's efficient. You bring AI into it that requires a lot of computing power and it's certainly going to, see, you're gonna see an uptick in cost. Um, how do you see the AI technology working within a SaaS business? <laughs> This is a very interesting one. We've been very deeply uh, thoughtful about this issue. SaaS business model, and as companies at NASDAQ who are, uh, represent this business model, they're all about velocity, velocity of selling, velocity of delivering value to the customer and moving fast. Whereas AI, which is profoundly powerful, has an inherent slowness to it. It needs data, where data scientists need to take more data, model stuff on it, test it, and then roll it out. So if you think about, is AI really compatible to a SaaS business model? That the first pass, possibly no. But it's really possible in today's world to marry the two together. The power of AI coming with the velocity of SaaS. And the way to do it is to really think about how much data can be trained and modeled before showing up at the customer. If I'm meeting a telecom customer, and I've already served 35 other telecom companies around the world, I don't need to learn from scratch, and my AI is already trained on telecom com conversations, et cetera. So in about 30 to 60 days, do I need to learn something new about your business? Yes, but I'm ready to go. At the same time, SaaS businesses are tremendously efficient. Gross margin matters, et cetera. And so AI today requires a lot of compute. We know that. It requires a lot of uh, silicon. It re requires lots of GPUs and so on and so forth. Yet again, being very thoughtful about not every problem needs to be solved by the biggest harness. Not every small fly needs to be smacked by the biggest harness. And that's the analogy that we've been very thoughtful about on how do we get this very powerful opportunity in front of our customers, which is AI, and marry it with the efficiency and velocity of the SaaS business model. Is AI a bubble? Are we at the peak of the hype cycle? I mean, how do you see this playing out? I get hundreds of pitches a day for my show. And there's always a new cycle attached to it, whether it's blockchain, whether it's you know a bank imploding. But with AI, I can't recall a time where every company was trying to find a way to get AI into the pitch. Are we at a peak here? What we are really seeing is an opportunity to tremendously shift the business economics in various parts of business and not just one or two places. Whether it's changing the economic model of call centers where callers like you and I will not have to wait for queues and yet at the same time, companies can service us at a fraction of the cost of running big call centers. Sales meetings, instead of having salespeople travel all around, all around the world, we can now marry the productivity of video meetings with AI being a co-pilot and having a very human-like experience on that. So we are seeing real savings, real benefits, real examples in thousands of companies around the world using and leveraging AI. You and I are just about to experience a massive wave of consumer applications such as internet search and our lives are gonna get really impacted. So I wouldn't call it a real bubble, although we will see likely this initial wave settle down and real business and consumer applications who are delivering ROI, 
and have value in our lives take off, whereas others, which are interesting but not yet proven, might get uh, uh, filtered out. And finally, when you think about AI and what to expect going forward, what does the future look like? Well, I personally am very excited with where we are. At Unifor, we believe we've seen a couple of big technology transitions in the past. We've seen the internet revolution of the 2000s. Mm -hmm. In 2010, we saw mobile and then cloud give a big impetus to global economies. Right now with AI, we are seeing yet again a massive technology transition. We believe this one is bigger than the cloud, the mobile, and even the internet because the opportunity is so profound and the use cases are just getting started. So at Unifor, we are very, very excited about the opportunity and our job is to get our 1,500 customers prepared to get benefit from this opportunity. All right, Avesh, I appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.